Few creators do as good of a job of angering every community touched as Quantum TV, a person that labels themselves as the number one brand in honesty. Quantum reviews televisions and sometimes games or movies. The accuracy of his calibration and the source of his criticism are often brought into question by others in his field. They will call him a narcissist, a copyright abuser, a liar, and a manipulator. Yet he always flips the script and accuses his critics of the very same, while obsessively deleting comments on his own channel and posting comments on others. However, his methods go beyond criticism. At one point, because of his universally hated review on Elden Ring, a game he allegedly didn't play yet spanned more than three videos reviewing it while also attacking people that play the game. So I would say this game is for somebody who really is looking for a sandbox. They have no family, no friends, no life, and they have literally thousands of hours to grind away. He eventually contacted a creator's mother as an intimidation tactic. Oh boy. After his typical tactics of copyright abuse failed, and how YouTube reacted to it and Quantum overall when he was at the center of this massive scandal was even more surprising. He was also blamed for repeated spam calls to a different creator and the creator's significant other. Quantum has shown deep hatred for different groups and accused his opponents of worshipping Satan and drug use through a method of hypnosis hidden through their TV reviews. That still only scratches the surface of what he is trying to hide through his pattern deletion of videos and a past he attempts to hand off. So who is Quantum TV? Why was he arrested? And what is he really hiding? Quantum's story, at least as far back as he's enabled to clean the breadcrumbs, starts in 2009. A Twitter account under Ramil X is made with a bio that reads, quote, bio are for single people, bitch I'm married, unquote. This is a conflicting statement, as in trying to prove the solitary lifestyle of those that write bios, he himself has written one. Fitting that his stories start with a contradiction. Scrolling through his first replies, he attempts to get the attention of several record companies and the replies reveal he is a guitarist and possibly a decent one by the songs he's playing. He also links to his MySpace that has a single song. Though as the platform has deteriorated, the song is unplayable. There also exists a YouTube channel that goes by Cataclysm Clamor, also made in 2009. Within was a single video of Quantum and his band attending a battle of the bands. The crew thumbnail shows Quantum on guitar. The interesting bit is Quantum both disavows prior channels and even this Twitter. Yet this Battle of the Bands video, if clicked on through the link, shows that it was claimed by Quantum TV for copyright. In an attempt to disprove and hide his past, he only gives it legitimacy. Additionally, it shows that Quantum lacks access to his older social media accounts as it would have been less telling if the video or the channel itself was deactivated. And then after 2009, nothing. Until four years later on June 30th, 2013, Ramiel X tweeted, Finally back from the military, expect new music soon. Followed by its last tweet, Beautiful Florida weather. What happened was Quantum signed up for the Marines. Then he was honorably discharged a few months after joining due to degenerative nerve damage. And so he was on to his next venture. In sync with his last tweet, he made a new channel within two days of posting it, under the name Quantum Apotheosis. Quantum has few definitions. To most, the word is just known by the complexity around its proper usage. Apotheosis, however, is quite different and telling of quantum. It can be defined as the highest point in development of something, culmination or climax. There are two ways to view this. One is how he may view it in defining himself as especially skilled. The peak may be in reference to others as he sits upon the top and towers others with his status, ability, or knowledge. The other interpretation is more sad but realistically applicable, and that quantum apotheosis, as we're about to find out, is the best version of themselves, with his peak of competence being the majority's trough, and will be unable to improve through his status, ability, or knowledge. Unfortunately, the channel Quantum Apotheosis has wiped their catalog from 2014 to mid-2022. In place, his new Quantum Apotheos Twitter launched close to his channel of a similar name, and other surviving interactions with him will fill in the blanks. From 2014 through 2017, on his Twitter, the majority of early tweets are directed at the developers of a wrestling and Naruto video game. And then in 2017, the tweets shift heavily, and only focus on supporting the US president, before then again tweeting at game developers, stating that their games are all trash and unplayable. Notice how none of these tweets play into the purpose of his Twitter. As per the bio, he reveals he is a photographer. This is all extremely light compared to what comes next. Quantum apotheosis 
he is about television's tech channel. I just wanted to just let you you know, especially Quantum, because he called me out on it. And for some apparent reason, he has some kind of problem with me. I don't know what it is. This guy, Quantum Apocalypse, is still haven't learned his lesson, you know. And he's still with the old ad techs, but I'm personally glad they hit channel because he he was lying about a lot of stuff, man. I'd be lying about the TVs he had. Those channels discussing Quantum were Mr. 4K, Sprite Ent, and Westside Tech, respectively. With videos released in either March of 2018 or April 2018, they are also all relatively small tech review channels. While Mr. 4K was shouting out Quantum, Sprite Ent was confused as to why he was getting targeted by Quantum, and Westside Tech was happily partaking in attacks back to Quantum. Mr. 4K's video in particular reveals that Quantum had 13,000 subscribers and had now moved on to reviewing televisions and even uploading movie clips as per his uploading of a scene from Record Ralph 2 reveals. More pancakes! Let's speed it up! Pancake! 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 Eat, little buddy! Eat! 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 <laughs> uh, Ralph, you might want to try feeding the kitty for a little while. No! The kitty gets the milkshake! The bunny gets the pancake. That movie clip is also the second most popular video on his channel. Its description reads, Hashtag Quantum Apotheosis The Bunny Gets a Pancake will likely be the next big meme. Enjoy the funniest clip of the year from the first person with the bunny gets the pancake scene ready to go for all. The rest of the description is inaccessible. It's hard to say why Quantum began reviewing televisions. But then again, his interest and prior experiences do range widely, as do the people he was attacking through his videos and now tweets through his third, newly made Twitter, Quantum TV underscore YT, made in June 2018. The same month, The Last of Us Part 2 was coming out, as well as building controversy before its release. Quantum tells the director of the game to keep their sexuality to themselves underneath one of their tweets. Quantum is also seen attacking a user that promoted the game and the game studio directly. What would really later draw interest is this post of two women dancing in a behind the scenes of Last of Us Part 2, where in response, Quantum tweets, quote, You have LGBT kissing in church, but we're bigots for rejecting this hateful content? Ugh, why aren't you Pulse victims? SMH, the world would be a better place without you. Hashtag boycott, hashtag the LGBT of us, unquote. Quantum is referencing a tragedy where 49 people were killed and 53 others were wounded at Pulse, a gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida. A user then questions Quantum's sanity. Quantum responds with, quote, They deserve it. The world is better off without them forcing their lifestyles on it. Unquote. These tweets, taking place from June 12, 2018 to June 14, 2018, possibly lined up with a video on Quantum Apotheosis. YouTube, however, was less accepting of his stance and, due to repeated offenses, banned Quantum Apotheosis. But looking at Quantum's Facebook, that wasn't his only channel. Not only did Quantum make a gaming channel in March of 2018, he also made Quantum TV blogs the year prior. His Facebook directing users towards a blog channel that would now become his main channel went rebranding simply as the now infamously known Quantum TV. On his gaming channel, like on his main channel, he did not abstain from uploading the same kind of controversial content that got him banned. At least it seems that way because all these videos are unavailable due to his mass deletion of them. As a testament to the depths of his scrubbing, his first available video on Quantum TV was posted further into the year on October 17, 2018, yet is labeled episode 394. The next video uploaded in November skips to episode 449. The next available video uploaded in June 2019 is episode 637. After this video, the labeling slash uploads seem to have stabilized, as they mostly begin following accurate numerical order. While Quantum could have theoretically uploaded months apart and labeled the numbers sporadically, his social blade shows a mass deletion of over 5 million views off his channel. And theoretically, if his average video gets 10,000 views, then that amounts to over 500 videos removed from 2017 to 2022. As for the meat of his channel, the reviews themselves are not very interesting, unless you are looking for reviews for a specific model and how bad the input lag is and the like. The process of how these are made is far more interesting. The theory is that he uses loophole sorts by having the highest tier membership you can with Best Buy. This allows returns for up to 60 days in. So he purchases a television, 
produces several videos covering the television's performance that again makes it more frustrating for viewers and lowers the chances of them returning because they'd had to go through several of his videos on the same television to get a conclusion. And even then, his accuracy is questionable at best. In some videos, he doesn't even review the television. He just rants about the quality of the box it came in. You paid $3,000. The box isn't glued. It isn't stapled. It pops up from the top. It's plain. It's just cardboard with print to sit here and justify this and say dumb shit like, who cares about the box? The box doesn't matter. Are you a fucking idiot? Do you understand? If you move, where are you going to put the fucking TV? Are you one of those dumb fucks that throw a shirt over your TV and just say, ah, I'll be okay? It's a $3,000 goddamn TV. I'm not throwing a fucking shirt over it, guy. Quantum then goes on to attack his audience in general, threatening to pause his service of TV reviews if his appreciation isn't shown. So all of you in the comment section that want to have a feeling about me telling you that this is a downgrade, that this is fucked up. I mean, I've got people literally acting like I just shit on the whole TV, the whole review is shot to hell, I have no redeeming qualities, I haven't even had the chance to tell you what I've seen yet, because we can't get past this part, and we ain't gonna get past this part until you motherfuckers show some respect. Because at the end of the fucking day, I'm doing you a goddamn service by showing you what they're taking away from you. I'm not getting paid like these shills are getting paid to talk about these TVs. This isn't a profession for me. I'm literally doing this to help people. And when I get disrespectful fucks that want to try to have an opinion about facts, like this is the biggest downgrade in Sony OLED history, I'm not going to let it go. I'm like a goddamn dog with a bone, and if you didn't know Quantum TV is like this, well, now you fucking know. This video is not an outlier. When the Xbox Series X was announced, the following day he deemed it to be trash. The reason? It's shape. The Xbox Series X is trash. It tries to make itself look like a PC, tricking console gamers into believing that they have anything close to what a PC actually offers. For his mainstay television reviews, he will sometimes purchase televisions and then put them side by side to compare them. After he is done with them, he returns them and cycles the money onto newer brands and so on. But Quantum is different from other television reviewers. Where the typical reviewer might go for a straightforward review without any distractions to complicate the simplicity of them, Quantum, in the reviews, opts to wear a mask of the comic book figure Deadpool and keeps to the same clothing for every review. As revealed by him, this is done to protect his family and family's privacy from crazy people online. But there is more effort here than he exposes. Take note of how the audio is not muffled, nor is there a lapel or any form of mic visible. Does PlayStation's new HDR option really do anything on the PlayStation 4? More important, notice how the mask doesn't move when he speaks. It doesn't stretch, and his features seem to also stay in position as he talks. This means that Quantum records the audio separately, then flails silently to match the audio. As for his outro, his videos end with him thrusting against the air, amongst other things, to a remix of his song from the cartoon Danny Phantom. There is a uniqueness to his work. His channel is presented as a TV review channel, yet he has what he calls a podcast that are mostly long-winded rants. The same thing can be said about his sparse game reviews uploaded on his channel. Arguably the videos with the least substance are the ones critiquing the other reviewers. Now Vincent in his review goes on to complain that TCL and Samsung are over brightening the EOTF curve. This is something that he's been whining and complaining about for the longest time, propagating it as an actual fact. Now I'm not trying to bury FOMO on tech with a shovel or anything like that, but when somebody is clearly wrong and they are misinforming people, they should be asked about it. TCL has heard some uh, feedback from other reviewers out there and they've implemented a fix and they say they're actually coming out with another one later. But other reviewers out there. Hello, other reviewer here. While it is hard to find someone that Quantum has not targeted, it is hard to find any reciprocation, especially from the larger channels that he often prods. In most of his videos, he makes sure to promote his slogan, the number one brand in honesty. Thanks for watching the number one brand in honesty. If you have questions, ask them in the comments down below. He claims that was given to him by viewers. 
But in the videos where he attacks other channels, he makes sure that the videos is equal parts critiques and repeating his phrase that fits into other arrogant self-promotional sayings to make it seem like, because of his negativity, is the only one able to create critical videos due to his lacking of sponsorships or affiliate links. Something that he will later have, but hardly change his tune to. Often inserted in these rants are phrases like, honestly, at the end of the day, in a nutshell, let's call it what it is. Let's be real. Just being real with you. The reality is, and other variants pushing the same idea of his over-encompassing honesty and certainty. Yet as much as he prods channels like HDTV Test or Stop the FOMO, both more successful channels, when searching them, these are all one-sided as Quantum is very much ignored. But viewers are not as kind, and will be expressive of Quantum's own criticisms. In the majority of videos from 2019, the comments are turned off, and the amount of likes are hidden. Even the videos that have less restrictions will not have the amount of comments his views would suggest. There are areas he cannot manipulate, like those of other channels' comment sections, Reddit, and the AVS forums. As per the front page is a forum community dedicated to home theater owners and enthusiasts. This is the largest gathering space that many TV reviewers will often visit, yet few posts will veer off topic and onto talking about Quantum TV all the way back when he was still Quantum Apotheosis. Members referring to him as amateur, taken aback to how much he attacks other tech reviewers. Readers unsure if it is a troll or if his criticisms are genuine. Redditors take a similar stance. The top comment of this post questioning Quantum's credibility says, quote, his name should be Quantum Psychosis, unquote. The rest of the comments talk about his reviews in the sense that there is no evidence to represent any credibility, while others talk about him personally, discussing both his strategy and instability. Quote, the guy is a nutbag who literally can't take any criticism. If somebody points out how his opinion may be wrong, he immediately deletes the post and bans the account. He seems to be an angry, unstable person in general who doesn't ever show his equipment or methodology. Unquote. As Quantum slowly began to grow, criticisms of him at a significantly faster pace would increase across these places, but never visibly on his channel. The most that was noticed was his frustration at always being the target. But it's like no matter how hard I try, I'm always the target. I've always been the target, I've noticed. And it's to the point where it's just like, what is this, pick on Black Guy Day? Because at this point, I, that's the only difference between the, the various publications that I'm noticing. I'm the only Black Guy out here. Even with his channel wiped to his own satisfaction, there are still many videos left that provide ample evidence of his hypocrisy and aggressiveness towards other reviewers. These are two key pieces that will increase criticism towards him. And as more people are exposed to Quantum, they will pick up on his moveset, of deflecting criticism mostly by disregarding his previous stances as if they never existed to fit whatever current narrative he is pushing. He has always tried to delete contradictory stances on his channel, but he will take this to a whole new level starting 2020 with another reviewer known as Ninjishin. Ninjishin created videos criticizing Quantum and what he calls his calibration service. To explain this, Quantum, using the $5 membership feature on YouTube, provides exclusive access to his calibration recommendations. There is a problem with this because there are actual TV calibrators, and it is well understood that TV calibrators must go into a person's house to calibrate the TV to fit the room it's in, to best work with the lighting it's exposed to, etc. That is the largest problem, as Quantum was only offering his services online and was trying to apply his recommendations to all televisions. Recommendations that were at times so terrible that his recommended levels of saturation made the people on screen look like lobsters. Nice. So, Ninjishin purchased a channel membership and heavily criticized Quantum's advice. Quantum was not very pleased at this and other videos Ninjishin made, so he tried to take them down through a DMCA, a request that allows a copyright holder to claim that the infringer is using their content in a non-transformative way. When this is done, unless it is filed incorrectly or YouTube has determined that without a reasonable doubt no work was infringed upon, the video will be taken down and then the infringer can fight to reinstate the video by providing their personal information to the copyright holder in order for them to sue the infringer. In that case, YouTube will wait two weeks for the copyright holder to submit proof that they are suing the infringer and the video will be left down. Or, as is almost always the case, the video will be reinstated because lawsuits are costly and the copyright system is often abused to harass and intimidate. But again, if YouTube decides that the initial takedown request is unreasonable, they will still notify the would-be infringer that someone did try to take their video down and provide them with what they told YouTube. That's why we have this email that shows Quantum TV tried to take Ninjishin's video down criticizing him. 
claiming that he, Quantum TV, owned the rights to cosplay Deadpool and the proof was a photo, as Ninjitian in criticizing Quantum showed him in the cosplay. This is quite entertaining because Quantum, prior to this takedown, had his own video taken down and explained fair use and copyright abuse rather well. Under copyright law, however, there are certain allowances made such as commentary, critical critiques, uh, fucking, you know, uh, review pieces, and me reviewing your disc and showing and highlighting problems and, and literally doing it for educational purposes is not a violation of copyright and I am not usurping your market, therefore this is a fraudulent copyright strike and I will fight it tooth and fucking nail. Which shows he has understanding of it. The best part is, with this understanding of fair use and the critical protection transformative videos have, he still filed that request, and a part of him knew it would fail. What Quantum likely didn't know is initial and subsequent emails sent back and forth through the DMCA process will also be sent to the infringer. So Ninjitian was also able to see the lies Quantum was developing in order to try to sway YouTube. It's not so much the copyright strike, it was the back and forth in the email chain with YouTube, because you get to see everything. Right. And he victimizes himself in the copyright claims. He was stating, you know, this guy is harassing my family, he's going after my mentally disabled brother, like all this stuff that I had no clue about. What the And fuck? I guess he doesn't, yeah, I guess he doesn't realize that the person that receives the copyright claim sees everything. As is typical with manipulative and narcissistic individuals, their personal stances matter very little. Being correct, being on top, gloating is the usual goal. That's why it's interesting that Quantum allegedly made the accusation that Ninjitian was harassing his brother. Yet when his takedown request failed, Quantum took matters into his own hands. At least according to Ninjitian. So, I want to say it was September 2021. Mm -hmm. was when I had put out a video saying um, I paid $5 for Quantum TV settings so you don't have to. Kind of like one of those before you buy videos. Yeah, like the ones that are like before you buy like this, uh, yeah, this yeah. toilet wand or whatever. Yeah, and I think I even had, um, I think my girlfriend was even sitting next to me while I was recording the video. And um, it, I mean, they were god awful. I think we were playing Animal Crossing or something, and I was just getting her honest reaction to everything because she's into graphic design, UX design, so she's very visual. <laughs> <laughs> she was just laughing it up and everything. Well, what ended up happening, like early in the morning, it was like seven o'clock in the morning, she kind of r rushes out of the bedroom and she gets, she gets this message to her phone that is a, it's a, a, a GIF of like a Deadpool, like, kind of like animated like kind of like laughing at her yeah and it just has her name and then it has our full address on it i started getting messages from a user called controller corpse so controller c-o-r-p-s which mm -hmm. happens to be quantum's uh tiktok username which now i think says something else i forget what it is man he's everywhere and yeah, yeah, yeah. and it basically had um it was just like saying hi with my real name an address and then she started getting text messages and her family members started getting text messages mm -hmm. with those same pictures and their addresses in my mind i go okay there's two scenarios here either it is him directly or it could be something like one of his mods mm -hmm. or it could be like a super fan you know somehow some super fan right. was you know threatening me and doing all this other stuff on his behalf mm -hmm. um Later in the week, I was getting calls from, you know, from my actual girlfriend, and I would get them every thirty seconds. And her, phone, she wasn't calling me. Mm -hmm. It was a spoof number to the point where it was just keeping my phone locked up, so I wasn't able to take calls for like calibrations. Right. So I ended up having to block these phone numbers just so my phone would be untied. Like that's the kind of stuff I dealt with. What you want to do is file what's called like an IC three report, or it's an IC. It's one of those. It's an internet. Um, crimes prevention report where you can put all the information in, you can do all this stuff, right? Right. It's I see three. You're right. I see three. Yeah, yeah. So I put all that stuff in. I put his name as well as his spouse's name because that stuff had been sent to me. And basically, I had sent him an e another email that basically said, and I still have that email that I sent to him. And mm -hmm. I basically said, "Hey, file this report. Do not contact me. Do not do anything anymore whatsoever." Mm -hmm. And magically everything stopped.
While it is virtually impossible to prove with 100% certainty that Quantum was harassing Nagician, especially when only going on Nagician's words, there are pieces of information that existence increased the probability. First is the account Nagician mentioned was Controller Corpse, but it only references that as Quantum's former TikTok name. But looking at Quantum's about page, his email is that exact same username. As for the number, Nagician says he freely gave it out to Quantum when he was trying to be friendly. Now, the more damning accusation is that Quantum was also harassing Nagician's girlfriend and family with these calls. To make this even remotely likely, he would have to expose himself to have the ability to get information from creators' families, which he hasn't done quite yet. This took place around September of 2020. Yet, just a month later, things were looking even more bleak for Quantum and his reputation. First, another Reddit post was made asking if Quantum is reliable, where Quantum says, Hell, I dare say I'm the 0.1% when it comes to honesty. These users don't seem to agree, saying that 99.99% .99 of the information he spreads is false, biased, and uneducated. Every comment in this thread writes about how narcissistic, angry, hypocritical, annoying, and overall unreliable he is. These are just his viewers and perhaps viewers of competing channels. The resentment by the end of October had all the more reason to grow. Recalling the video where Quantum calls the Xbox trash and recommending consumers avoid purchasing it largely based on appearance just the day after it was announced in December of 2019, now in October 2020, he ramped up his uploads criticizing the Xbox just a month before it was meant to release. This brought on the ire of those already involved in the heated console war debate. He is an inherently very easy target due to his positioning. So Griffin Gaming, a creator that generally discusses commentary on the game community, broke apart one of Quantum's videos. Bro, like this video just needs to end at this point. You have completely embarrassed yourself at every single opportunity. And honestly, I kind of feel bad for you, dude. That being said, I want to thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. The number one brand in honesty. That's pretty fucking ironic. Displeased at what was likely the most negative attention he's received in such a short amount of time, Quantum fired back in a deleted video where he threatened to copyright strike Griffin's video and allegedly filed a takedown request as well. Quantum then threatens him some more and sets a goalpost hiding his unjustified anger where he likely thought Griffin wouldn't budge. But Griffin adhered to Quantum's rules and used a YouTube editor to trim out the section Quantum requested so in his email. Here, Quantum loosens up and retracts the takedown request. They go back and forth and appreciate the effort to understand one another and defuse the situation. And then, a day later, Quantum fires back and he is once more displeased. This time, blaming Griffin's video for doing more harm and deeming it responsible for serious death threats and racial slurs. Quantum again wants Griffin to take down the video. Griffin, unwilling to budge, is now threatened by Quantum reporting Griffin's video for cyber harassment. Now saying that Griffin's video is putting his daughter in danger and has led to the hacking of his Facebook, PlayStation, and Xbox. They somehow even got his phone number. Eventually, Griffin publishes a community post asking his viewers not to target Quantum to any degree. Then, two final emails are sent after Griffin's final response as Quantum continues to go to Griffin into deleting his video criticizing him. The cherry on top was this example comment that Quantum sent to prove the harassment he was getting was real. This is the best I can do to show you I'm not lying about the harassment without putting my family out there. Just letting you know again, it wasn't some trick. And this is the proof that he provides, bro. Griffin ended you. Your logic is trash. Log off, buddy. Quantum also uploaded another video naming Griffin Gaming and stating this. Honestly, you guys need to de-escalate and you need to calm the hell down because I, I'm not coming after you and your fucking families, okay? This is, this is ridiculous. That about wraps up 2020. 2021 was the same, just with more intensity. More off YouTube threads were the comments in mass recommended readers to stay away from Quantum, with stronger determination than any previous threats. This one in particular is special because HDTV Test or Vincent responded on January 30th, 2021, albeit indirectly to Quantum, in correcting his calibrations on a specific television. The only reason I'm doing this video is because there's another YouTube channel which suggested that the only way to unlock the full BT2020 potential on an LG CX or C10 OLED is by engaging BT2020 in this secret menu. I'm going to demonstrate the effects of doing so using real-world content in this video. HDTV Test also slides Quantum in his video. The thing with YouTube is that, you know, anyone can pick up a camera, make a few videos and then accumulate some subscribers and make people believe what they say. 
but what I wanted to do in this video is to dispel some misinformation using objective charts and also real world content. Quantum responded to this video by making his own on the same day. I'm almost dying of laughter because Vincent over at HDTV Test thought he did something real big when he showed you guys this HDMI signaling override menu. Well, I'm going to show you in real time the difference between what he's showing you and what I'm going to show you. Now, unlike Vincent, I'm not just going to sit here and show you the menu and tell you, oh my god, it's so red, when you go to the BT2020 and be like, run, run away, don't use it. <laughs> I swear to god, these, these kinds of videos that these clowns make crack me up because it shows that they are not the professionals they say they are, and they don't know the basics of TVs. Quantum's forced laughter poorly masks his frustration. His shaking recording that was possibly done through his phone exposes the anxiety in making an unplanned video that was a consequence of a quick response, and the repetition of his points demonstrates how distracted he was by HDTV test on video. It wouldn't be Quantum if he did not obsess over this and continue to prod. The following day, Quantum uploaded his second video on the matter using his repeat strategy of accusing users of abusing YouTube systems. So when you see this around and you're asking yourself who's more credible, I'm going to keep showing you what I do with time, facts, and we don't need to put anybody's personal information, anybody's family, anybody's name out there. We let the data speak for itself, right? And I think when you look at my recent videos, they speak for themselves in real time. As Quantum did with Griffin Gaming, he accuses HDTV test viewers of wanting to cause harm to him and his family, hence the Deadpool mask to protect his identity. Two months later, one of Quantum's own videos was taken down by a copyright strike and where he again shows apt understanding of what constitutes copyright abuse. So we've got my gadget world. You guys probably already know, talks a lot of smack in his comment sections. He's a guy with 15,000 subscribers that think he has 15 million. He really thinks highly of himself. You can tell by the way he behaves. Okay, we're not here for that though. What are we here for? He issued a takedown on Quantum TV for a two second GIF. Now, anybody that knows anything about copyright law knows that what he's doing is basically a revenge takedown. And that's definitely grounds for termination of your channel once YouTube finds out what you did. Critiqued critical commentary is allowed on YouTube. That, that is allowed in fair use. And if you don't know that, now you know. Even with this knowledge, he wouldn't shy away from repeating the same tactic as more and more people were catching on to his antics. Before that, he decided to take his channel more seriously, a milestone that was set when he announced he was going to do a face reveal on livestream for his members only, and by his words was going to have a grand old time and a lot of fun. After years of wearing the mask, I am finally going to be taking it off as an exclusive perk to my members for saying thank you for all the support and love that you guys have shown me throughout the years. It is finally time for the guy behind the mask to say hello. It will be an exclusive video for members. If you want to see the video, join up, become a member. It'll be an exclusive perk. That way we can keep the mystery for those who want it. But will be happening. We will definitely be taking the mask off and having a lot of fun. And I think this is going to be really cool. I can't wait to uh, see some of the reactions of some of you guys and just like have a grand old time. With as much as he hated the Xbox Series X, in this video uploaded on August 5th, 2021, he explains why it is now better than the competing console, though he still finds the design ugly. More importantly, he was recording videos without the Deadpool mask, as would become the standard for his channel. Again, disregarding his prior reasons for doing so. Except for some of his videos where he calls out creators that normally have still images and reaction GIFs. And though most view Quantum TV as unreliable, there are times he is so correct he's almost clairvoyant, like in the beginning of 2022. Be nervous. 2022 is a different year. I'm a different animal and I'm telling you right now we hit different. And the way we hit different is something that's a surprise we're all going to find out together. How about that? But what I will tell you is this. Don't take the underdogs lightly. What happened in 2022 was Quantum TV's largest drama yet, with him at the center. Fucking weak ass crybaby little bitch, Quantum TV. Your war with the TV calibration. <laughs> TV community. calibration community. Oh, you wow. Think I'm being too Whoa, dude. Uh, 
the dude's in deep. He's he's posting cringe on main. Oh wow, wow, wow. So many characters involved sparked from such a small event that snowballed to such an insane degree, stacked by Quantum TV's propensity to double down until he is unable. Whenever creators in whichever community recognizes the name Quantum TV, it was this event that is burned into their memory. How this manifested was a contrast of something universally loved attacked by something that was going to be universally hated. It's it. ah! Yes! Yes! Elder Ring! On February 25th, 2022, the world was introduced to a game written by George R. R. Martin, the writer of Game of Thrones, which is a highly awarded series of books. Developed by From Software, the developers of the Dark Souls game series who earned a reputation so great that their own games are used in general comparison to others when difficulty is one of its qualities, hence games being labeled Souls-likes. Yet still, those initiated into the series will find this game placed far above the rest for its unbelievably expansive world and diversity in weapons, enemies, and locations. A shared opinion so widespread that it won Game of the Year for 2022. And then you have the likes of Quantum TV, someone that has built a reputation themselves around their narcissistic, manipulative, and deceptive tendencies that on March 3rd, 2022, uploaded their review on Elden Ring. We're in the first 10 seconds recommended to not buy this game and cites extremely vague criticisms that can be applicable to any game. So, today I'll be giving you guys a review of Elden Ring. No spoilers and none of that other nonsense and we're gonna get straight to the point. Essentially, don't buy this game. This review also doesn't include any footage from the game, which all brings into question if he even played it. Moreover, he wasn't just attacking the game, he was attacking its player base. So I would say this game is for somebody who really is looking for a sandbox. They have no family, no friends, no life, and they have literally thousands of hours to grind away. I, I couldn't speak lowly enough about this game. I don't recommend it. And I think if you're smart, you'll just play something else. That's the review. Take it or leave it. Detaching from criticizing the game to its larger audience in a game review didn't play out for him. And here's why. In his previous videos reviewing televisions, he is protected by the general public's lack of understanding of televisions beyond the model they own. And even then, he goes into specifics about them like nits, color management, the works. He has reviewed televisions for nearly a decade, and has been able to mask his incompetence because of others' ignorance. But with Elden Ring, more than any other game or movie he's reviewed, he can't hide behind obscurity and every point he makes can be picked apart with accuracy as a general player base or anyone that is familiar with games can see the massive flaws in his arguments. And honestly, graphically, it has some serious challenges as far as frame rates and how the, again, textures even are produced in some frame rate modes. Even so, that isn't what made things worse. It was never really about this Elden Ring review. It was his need to double down on his takes that in every instance made it all worse for him. A few days after his initial review, he received more backlash than usual, so in response, he made a second part, wherein he repeats his opinions and again goes after the player base. So, I'm receiving some backlash now that I wanted to address with some of you, because a lot of you are not only being childish, but I don't think you're actually seeing this objectively. And you know what I met with when I talk about flaws? With the series, the same thing I met with the TV world, where when you mention a problem with something, fans of that series just damage control it. They'll say stupid, petty, chisty, catty, childish shit. Like, oh, you've lost credibility because you've spoke your mind. You, you gave your opinion. You now have no credibility with me. Okay, bye, bitch. I don't give a fuck. The reality is, that's my opinion based off of playing it as a new person. They have no easy mode. The graphics are dog shit. I mean, we're talking PS5 and Xbox Series X. A game that's not for everyone isn't a game that should be made, in my opinion. He also tells people to end themselves. And it's your fault, not the dev's fault for not thinking of every single player of all kinds of walks of life. They don't care. It, it's, it's a challenge, and it has to be for players who think every game is fucking easy, and if you aren't one of those players, then you are a scumbag, you filthy casual. At the end of the day, go kill yourself, man. After this, things somewhat died down. 
Quantum went at least a week without responding to the comments criticizing his reviews, and there wasn't much attention to his opinions. There was, however, a video uploaded by a relatively small creator with 5,000 subscribers in comparison to Quantum's 60,000 that made a video on Quantum's two-part review. But that wasn't getting any traction at all. Even so, Quantum took it upon himself to post this comment on Mischief's video saying he stole his footage with an illegal video downloader and threatened to take down Mischief's video through a DMCA takedown. Quantum goes on to miscite YouTube's terms of service to intimidate Mischief. And it worked. By March 14th, Quantum has sent a takedown request of the video. But before it was applied, Mischief took down his own video, saving him from getting a strike on his channel. Quantum also took down his original two videos and uploaded a new one where by the looks of it, he was signing a hastily made PowerPoint to promote his ill-conceived notions of fair use, that in doing so, again exposed his ignorance. This was done while downplaying recent case law that goes against what he is doing by trying to deem it as useless. In this victory lap, Quantum references his prior experiences with Griffin Gaming and also attacks Mischief for now going around and attempting to get other creators' attention on Quantum's copyright threats. But as much as he tried to repeat his history of getting the final word, it wouldn't be so this time. Mischief, now revealed to be a 16-year-old residing in the UK as hinted through a community post, uploaded a video discussing the dangers of copyright abuse or taking down videos for criticism which falls under fair use but masking it as a copyright takedown which can be deemed abuse of the system, which is grounds for many things if done with malice. A lot of you are probably wondering what the hell happened. Well, a channel with 64,000 subscribers decided to harass me with threats of a copyright strike against my channel because I called out their Elden Ring review, in which they consistently got things factually incorrect. First of all, at the time, I simply said to myself, fuck this, I'll deal with it later, and so took it down. What you're seeing now is me dealing with it later, and I will be, in fact, re-uploading it around two hours after this video. And if he takes any action against the video, you can bet your ass it's going to more than likely haunt his channel forever. There is one thing no community on YouTube tolerates and it's a copyright abuser. What's more, Mischief, on the same day, re-uploaded his original video on Quantum with slight edits made to decrease the likelihood of it being taken down. Behind the scenes, a larger gaming creator known as Yakman was already in contact with Mischief about the situation. Publicly, other creators, small and large, were beginning to pick up his story. Yet Quantum persisted, as the following day on the 16th, he uploaded his fourth video, trying to bring the narrative back to Elden Ring. He then attacks anyone willing to pick up this story and goes back on attacking the Elden Ring player base. Then a fifth video on the 17th, a video responding to rival Review Tech USA, a larger channel that dabbles in tech and commentary. The strategy of trying to bring the argument to a lesser offense wasn't working. Though again, in this video he tries to tie it all back to Elden Ring while trying to explain away what he meant by telling viewers to end themselves. You guys are bashing on me, calling me a filthy casual player, and I say, hey man, go kill yourself. Because that's the name of the game, go kill yourself, go die in the game a bunch of times. That's literally what the game is about and what you're bitching at me for not wanting to go do. I tell you to go do it and now, he said go kill yourself, you just don't do that. What in the woke trash is that? Get the fuck out of here with that. In this video, he used another strategy from his moveset. He was trying to deflect creators' arguments and accusing them of whatever he is being accused of. You literally want people to accept only your opinion. You want an echo chamber, and when you don't get it, you're going to resort to childish behavior. It is important to note that Quantum was still removing comments, disabling the like bar, and had a Discord where he was surrounded by those few that supported him. Another issue arose. The sixth video on the subject, uploaded on the 18th, also responding to Review Tech USA, was more deflection. And addressing the 2018 Twitter post saying that two women dancing should have been part of a tragedy, and other tweets of that essence. Old enemies were joining in and adding to the stacking pile of evidence. Quantum in response said that he was hacked during this time and wouldn't be in his character to say those things. But he wants to run with cancel culture. He wants to literally try to cancel me for hacked tweets. Yes, you heard that right. Hacked tweets as if I'm special. That's right, folks. I'm the only one on social media, period, that has ever been hacked. Never mind the fact that when people hack you, they literally turn your page into something that goes totally against your values and literally what you initially set your page up to be. Also being brought to light was a Batman review posted just eight days ago where he calls an actress a half-breed. One of the moments that were really annoying for me is like you had Selena Kyle, which is Lenny Kravitz's daughter, like a half-breed, basically. It was apparent people were going through his history of damning videos. 
So in March, he mass deleted hundreds of them that resulted in over 5 million views lost on his channel. Quantum did some digging of his own and found a video of Review Tech USA using the F slur when confronting a possible troll. I don't know, man, but you seem that you are such a fucking loser fabbit that you come on here all the fucking time. Yet the attention was still on Quantum, with more eyes on him than he's ever had. Evident through this capture of his Discord where he prods at his former one-way enemies, Stop the FOMO, Digital Trends, and HDTV Test, exposing them to be, quote, Satanist in disguise. Every time I've seen one of their videos, you can tell they are trying to brainwash the masses into their gay, liberal, satanic, atheist agenda, unquote. Quantum then goes on to say that watching Stop the FOMO in particular will influence you to have relationships with your father and do drugs while trying to conjure demons. His source is when Stop the FOMO used a symbol from the television show Lucifer when trying to calibrate a TV. The rest of the post is more the same, as he is combating YouTubers' gay agenda and reminds others to stay strong in the face of Christ who died for our sins. Then the final video in March of this topic was uploaded on the 28th. I'll tell you this, keep your eyes open for what we do next because boy oh boy if you're mad now, you're going to be pissed when you just see how far we continue to grow and what we take it to. April continued this madness. On the second, another video, this time calling Review Tech USA a predator for being a fan of a streamer and states that Review Tech USA deserves to be divorced. A similar video was uploaded on the third, and then nothing, except a mass deletion of nearly all of his Elden Ring videos that at this point was done in vain because they were already backed up and spread to smaller commentators that were covering Quantum's incessant rants. By far, the most effective video was one that's purpose wasn't even on covering Quantum, but a compilation of criticizing the most disliked Elden Ring opinions on YouTube, uploaded by none other than the Actman. And next up on the Elden Ring Clown Show is a rabbit hole I can't be bothered to go into. Apparently this guy Quantum TV made an Elden Ring review that he later deleted. People saw it was filled with terrible takes and made fun of it, like you do on the internet. One of these videos happened to be from a 17-year-old British guy named Mischief. And his response video triggered Quantum TV so far off the edge that he threatened to copyright strike a miner in a different country for criticizing him. This also led to a bunch of other YouTubers picking up the story, uh, which led to Quantum making more videos and justifying his insane takes that you're about to see. It's like a rabbit hole we don't even want to go down. Though Quantum's three initial videos did take up the majority of Ackman's criticisms, it likely would have been left at this. And then Quantum responded. Scrolling through all the negative comments he received revealed that he was going to try to take even Ackman's videos down through copyright. So for every single take on this internet that you see where people are saying that none of this is about Elden Ring, there you go. This, this is what it's about. So since, what is his name here? The Actman? Never heard of you until your fans came and attacked literally all of my videos and just started spamming and trolling and all that crap. So... We're going to go over your so-called hot takes, which contains a lot of stolen footage, and which, by the way, I'll look into my options around getting that taken down because... In the same video, at around the 5 minute mark, he accidentally reveals Actman's video to be fair use by saying Actman was adding his own twist and turns and therefore transforming it into a different video, which means it was protected by fair use. You want to criticize me, do it all day, every day. You're doing it anyway. But the point is, like, the way you're doing it is dishonest. It's like, you know, you're taking things out of context. You're adding your little twists and your opinions to things. A very damning start to his biggest mistake yet. Quantum did try to take down Actman's video, but through sheer incompetence, didn't even fill out the takedown form correctly. For the title of the video, he simply put Elden Ring Review. He didn't link to his stolen content as required because he removed his videos. And he cites the entirety of the section where Ackman discusses Quantum as his own original work. On the 19th of April, after receiving this takedown attempt that was not enforced by YouTube, likely through the incompetence of Quantum, Ackman decided he wanted to settle this directly and visited Quantum's Discord where it was taken to private messages. But Quantum was unwilling to budge nor discuss matters through a voice chat. There has also never been a situation, at least a known one, where Quantum talks to a creator through voice chat directly, as he wouldn't be able to defend himself through his typical strategy of a one-sided argument. Now, both parties involved would escalate the situation. 
The Ackman's goal, as revealed through a second video uploaded on April 23rd, 2022, besides promoting mischief to the point that his channel was larger than Quantum's, which it is now, was to take down Quantum's channel. I suggest you make peace with whatever content you wish to publish on your channel before you see this screen again, and Quantum, you're gonna see it again. This video is of high quality, and themed in the video game series Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney where Ackman was playing his own take on Phoenix Wright as the act attorney, going over what led to this situation, including Review Tech's USA's and Mischief's coverage of Quantum. As for his stance, he could, theoretically, take down Quantum's channel by citing copyright abuse. But that much is harder to prove because as long as any video includes the likeness or work of the accuser, then they have the right to challenge it no matter how much it lies within fair use. This is because YouTube, in terms of copyright, protects itself with its offhand approach and will let the individual creators or companies bring it to a court of law that will give the ultimate decision. Undeniable copyright abuse is when someone tries to take down a video or multiple videos with none of their likeness. The second method that Ackman was using to try to get Quantum banned was pointing out Quantum's ban evading, because people rediscovered Quantum's original banned channel, Quantum Apotheosis. That means that Quantum TV could very much be terminated for ban evasion. Little did either know how deep this would go. Yes, is uh, this is mine? I'm calling on behalf of Quantum TV. Your son has been making a string of uh, really defamatory posts about things he doesn't necessarily understand, and I want to try to talk about this. That is Quantum TV on the phone calling the Act Man's mother. This call took place only 40 minutes after the Act Man uploaded his second video, which is very revealing of Quantum's tactics and how he was either sitting on his mother's information or just found it that fast. The call is recorded through Quantum's in-house security camera that was only able to pick up Quantum's side of the call. Less than a minute in, she presumably asks how he got her number, which he responds, Public records. He also reveals he is contacting her to get a hold of Ackman, though he had a prior conversation with him and an offer to call through Discord. There was even a live stream hosted by Mischief and had the Ackman on as a guest, where Quantum was typing in the chat. Both hosts were persistent in trying to get Quantum on so they could speak to him. You're in chat, you're talking to us, just join the fucking server! Like, just have a conversation instead of, like, typing in chat, because that shit's delayed, it's really annoying. But Quantum kept dodging the offer with the excuse that he was driving. The phone call, at least as much as Quantum recorded, was nearly 8 minutes long. The tactic of calling another creator's mother and threatening a litigation is not a common one, and after the six-minute mark of threats of litigation and giving his phone number to her so she can pass it on to the Ackman, I mean, I, at this point, I, I want to limit the amount of information that we're giving out because I don't plan on uh, doing a whole lot if not necessary. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, if you're if you're comfortable with it, you can give him my phone number, and uh, me and your son can have a conversation. No, no uh, malice or anything behind this. She, as most people would be, is in disbelief that this is not a prank call. It's not a prank call. This isn't a game. <laughs> I'm not. Uh, I'm not sitting here to cause trouble for anyone. So, yeah, I just wanted to leave me alone. He's harassing the hell out of me, really. If I'm being quite honest with you, ma'am, and I, I think at this point, it's to a point where if he doesn't stop, my only choice would be legal action, and I don't really like to go that route. It's not that I don't have. The ability to go that route. I'd rather not drag a family through the mud given the times and the current status of the world. You understand what I mean? Like A minute after the call ends, still in disbelief, she calls back to make sure it wasn't a prank. Hello, on TV. No, you're good. It's it, this is an actual contact for Quantum TV. You can call me anytime. It's Legit. At this point in time, no one knew about the call except for Quantum TV, his wife, and the Ackman's family. In contacting the Ackman's mother, Quantum showed he had the Ackman's family's personal information and could open them to harassment beyond just Quantum himself. This event also gives more credibility to what happened to Ninjitian several years back. And this tactic worked. The feud had jumped off of YouTube and was affecting the Ackman's family. As a direct result, the act man on Twitter, about two hours after the call, announced he was going back to regular content and was done with the quantum business. What happens next is unsurprising. The most regular thing predicted by an irregular person's documented actions. A day after the call, on April 24th, Quantum TV released another video titled The Power of an Apology. 
In the Quantum TV moveset, he will struggle not to gloat after he has seemingly won. He will press and press more than ever before if he feels the other person has lost. More importantly, he also uses his actions or offenses as a defense. If he does something malicious, he understands that that action is malicious, but will attempt to manipulate the situation to make it seem like whatever he did also happened to him, or at least happened to him first while ignoring the malice behind his own actions. And then you don't just stop there, you go even further with it, and some of you start doxing and sharing personal information, and then you go even a step further, you find people in real life, and then you start vandalizing things. And then when, you're, when you, as a creator, are approached and told, your video did this, these are your fans that are doing this, dude, you gotta stop. You guys double down and go, you know what? Fuck you, you're full of shit, you're a hyper, you're, you're a, what, what is it? You're pathologically lying about this. Why would anyone lie to you about reaching out to you? I, bro, ask him. Don't, don't think I'm playing around. I called Ackman's mother to get a hold of him to let him know the kind of damage he was causing, okay? I'm not fucking around with this. In a about 30 second span, Quantum goes from discussing how rapidly things devolve to taboo tactics, like accessing personal information to harass creators, to then gloating about calling the Ackman's mom, thus revealing it to the world that Quantum TV called the Ackman's mother. As Quantum requested, people were reaching out to the Ackman to verify this. And the Ackman on Twitter did so with this image where his mother calls Quantum a nut and states, quote, If we see you, Quantum, we shoot on sight. Unquote. The Ackman was back in the game. And as a response to this two-part tweet, Quantum uploaded a nearly 30-minute long video with the full call. And because the Ackman stated he would shoot on sight, Quantum titled the video, The Ackman Threatened to Murder Me. It should be noted that before, after, and during all of this, Quantum maintained his schedule of television reviews. After the last Ackman video, things slowed down. On April 29th and May 17th, YouTube emailed the Ackman, and on both instances, they said that they did not find any violations of their community guidelines in reference to Quantum TV. Quantum in his Discord was saying, quote, I wish the most painful death on everyone involved in this massive smear campaign, unquote. Overall, May was an uneventful month. In June, however, Ackman's third video on Quantum was uploaded titled The Dark Age of YouTube. In the video, the Ackman actualizes the Ace Attorney character, full with custom-made animations like you would find in the actual game series. He summarizes the more recent events like the call to his mother and uses Quantum's words against him. He also discusses the unlikeness of Quantum getting hacked as he's using it as an excuse to remove himself from these tweets because Quantum has demonstrated time after time that he aligns with that ideology. The Ackman also goes over Quantum's history of copyright abuse with other creators and positions himself and in a way YouTube that they either ban Quantum TV or that they side with hate, creating a with us or against us situation. The most important part of this video is it delves into the banned channel Quantum Apotheosis and the current channel Quantum TV that is being used to ban Evade and his grounds for termination of his channel. Except there is an issue. Though the Wayback Machine shows that Quantum Apotheosis was banned for several years, it was unbanned as recent as April 21st, 2022, just two days prior to when the Ackman released his second video. But now, somehow in June, which is two months later, the channel is unbanned and rebranded as Next Gen Gamers, meaning that Quantum was no longer banivating because his original channel was unbanned, and this is the Ackman's theory to how that was possible. Your Honor, it's possible to change the custom URL of a YouTube channel quite easily. I suspect he found this video, changed the link of an old channel he had privated to match this one, and is trying to pass it off as if he was never terminated. While the Ackman does have an interesting theory, the more recent explanation as to the unbanning of his channel is far more bizarre and is revealed later. Before then, YouTube did take action and only four days after the Ackman's third video because they went ahead and took that video down. The reason was for violating YouTube's policy on nudity or sexual content. As to why was deducted to an image in the video where Quantum is presented with a cucumber in his mouth. In YouTube's vague reasoning, it allowed the employee that was reviewing the video to remove it for unwanted sexualization, possibly a luck of the draw, because as is for much of YouTube, their systems are incredibly flawed, and the company is so big there are huge problems with communication and consistency. YouTube is a massive mess behind the scenes, exemplified by the reviewing system that is delegated to inconsistent employees that reasoning for takedowns, approval of monetization, and other aspects relies on whoever is currently reviewing said video. 
On YouTube, you can upload the same video twice, and one can be approved by a YouTube employee saying that there was nothing wrong with the video, and can accept advertisements. Approved. While the very same video, if reviewed again by a different employee with different personal beliefs, they can choose to not allow advertising. I don't know. This is to say the fate of any video will be determined by luck. And the act man got very unlucky. This takedown bothered the act man and a sea of YouTubers and streamers. In various communities, the outcry for this decision was felt in multiple videos covering YouTube's bizarre decision. And a day after it was taken down, the act man released various tweets, one saying he is again distancing himself from the situation after he claims the attention he was getting had a fan look up his family's information and reached out to his brother via text message. He was also making sarcastic tweets about new series he was planning and where he would break YouTube's rules. A joke that was meant to state that there was no consequence when Quantum broke them, so there wouldn't be a consequence for him or other rule breakers. One of these tweets read, quote, I'm excited to announce a new series of videos I'll be making on YouTube called Doxing Adventures with Actman. In it, I'll be doxing and harassing the family members of YouTube employees and other content creators. It's sure to have lots of family fun, ha ha ha, winky face. Unquote. This tweet was up for a few hours before being taken down because behind the scenes, Ackman's partner manager asked him to do so. Yet, two days later, his channel was demonetized. But the answer was not clear, and all lookers were as riled up as ever. The spreading assumption was because Ackman was airing out YouTube's incompetence, and they were trying to silence him by taking down his video and removing his ability to earn AdSense through his other videos. What's more is that this was in the same vein of Quantum sending out copyright strikes to silence his critics. And then uh, that deleted tweet joking about doxing was reanalyzed. On the 9th, in an interview hosted by news creator Phil DeFranco with the Actman as a guest, reveals that the tweet was the reason he was removed from the partner program. And though his partner manager at YouTube asked him to remove it, and he complied, someone higher up unaware of the communication took action when that tweet was initially being spread around. The decision to make such a tweet while he was on the forefront of the campaign to ban Quantum was a poor one, likely made through frustration. There was a lot of discussion, and the smaller opposition of Actman was getting more vocal. JayStation, a band creator known for creating schlock for children by capitalizing on tragedies and celebrities' death by calling their ghost at 3 a.m., was partaking in the frenzy, releasing a video called Calling the Actman's Mom at 3 a.m. Video. This video was uploaded on commentary YouTubers Tommy C's SFTP's channel to a mixed reaction. Right, guys, we got Mommy Ant Man's phone number right here. I am so scared to do this. Okay, we're gonna call her. It's calling right now. Okay, I don't know if she's gonna pick up. Hello. Hello, is this Ant Man's mom? Who's calling? What up, bitch? In the video, Jay Station seems so out of it that he calls him the Ant Man, the same title of the Marvel superhero. Even the fake caller name was labeled as the Ant-Man's mom, where some stock audio is played to represent the Ant-Man's mom. Regardless, all the big players were in unison. If everyone can agree on this fact, whether it be Keemstar, Philly D, fucking H3H3, that these are satirical tweets, all right? If you can get the enemies on the internet to agree that these are just jokes, I find it baffling that YouTube cannot, like, reverse a decision. At the end of the day, <laughs> human beings run this, right? YouTube's decision to strike at Actman was one that could be explained, but no explanation was satisfactory. To distract from this was Actman's reaction to JayStation's video pretending to call his mom at 3 a.m. He reacted well to it at first, then continued by stating that YouTube, quote, is well within their rights to take action against him and this video. Congratulations, dipshit, you played yourself, unquote. Actman was now targeting a different creator for uploading what was accepted to be a satirical video, albeit from a banned creator. Even so, you are allowed to have banned creators on your channel. The rule is that banned creators themselves cannot operate their own channel. This in turn brought more attention to Actman's own satirical tweet about doxing and put into question if it was hypocritical. Actman pressing on publicly and in private messages that Tommy C should receive a YouTube strike. As per the recommendation of fellow creators, he walked it back and apologized. What started from copyright abuse from an Elden Ring review had spiraled out of control. Quantum now utilized a different channel to re-upload an old video of Ackman saying the F and N word that did little to affect the Ackman's reputation because he renounced that old video. And after June of 2022, the momentum of the movement was lost. Conversation dissipated after Actman had his partnership reinstated in July and likely did not want to tempt fate in continuing his campaign. To End the Saga was a straightforward video uploaded in August of 2022. 
The video, only 20 minutes in length, has Ackman talking directly to his audience, vocalizing his disappointment in the events that transpired, and not 100% sure exactly for what reason his third video on Quantum was taken down, and why his channel was demonetized for a month. To summarize, the Ackman was out. Quantum was outed for his transgressions, yet he allegedly kept copyright striking smaller creators. Through and through, everyone was back doing what they were doing before this five-month-long drama. While everyone returned to their positions, perspectives were undoubtedly changed. Yet, the story doesn't end here. There was one unlikely character that mostly existed behind the scenes that replaced the Actman in spearheading a campaign against Quantum. To lesser attention, but to a larger personal degree. Quantum TV was in fact arrested by the Seminole County Sheriff's Office on the 14th of April for obstructing justice related to domestic violence. Now, I have to be really careful showing you what's happened. Quantum TV, it seems, has a public uh, docket out for a uh, first degree felony. 9-14-2022-1E. Obstructing justice, hinder with communication, info to Leo, judge felony, first, uh, you know, prosecute domestic violence, okay? On April 14th, 2023, Quantum TV was arrested. At 10.40 a.m., Quantum's wife was attempting to move funds from her bank account. It seems that Quantum tried to stop this by snatching her phone out of her hands, where she sustained small lacerations, possibly as a result of the force of the grab, removing herself as his nails clung on. She then tried to get Quantum's phone, but was deprived of that as well. This is when she threatened to call the police if he did not provide her with a cell phone. Quantum refused to comply. She then went to the leasing office where she did call the police, and this police report and mugshot were produced. A month later, the charges were dropped slash abandoned. But something new was brought forward, a restraining order of two years from his now ex-wife. And in the same month, it seems divorce proceedings began. These documents are a reliable source that brought a bit of relevancy to him again, as content creators were covering this arrest and what it could have meant for him. And because most videos were made in May, some creators were also covering the restraining order against him. What many didn't find or didn't touch because of the sensitivity of some of these TikToks that we will not delve into either was his new TikTok account that correctly described his situation under what no contact did to me. This is all one word with no spaces. In similar fashion, a string of short videos were rapid fired onto the account on May 13th, 37 to be exact all grieving his marriage and his frustration at the no-contact method his wife was taking, though none of these videos showed his likeness. This changed May 16th and established a pattern of irregular uploads, but rest assured, when he did upload, it was multiple videos in the same day. If you're in a situation like I'm in, you get a restraining order put on you because now she's afraid of you and what you might do. Of course, now that you've discovered that she's been talking to somebody behind your back, and it's always like this. Men always have to sit here getting the worst end of the stick because some woman decided that she was done with the relationship versus just packing her shit and going to be with the other person. No. In these early TikToks, Quanta makes reference to the social media app Snapchat, where the purpose is to exchange lingering images with text applied as a form of communication, but is revealing that his wife, through her communication of that app, found someone to be unfaithful with. Additionally, he claimed his wife labeled him as a narcissist, in the end, it really is just a matter of somebody getting the quits. And the woman checked out emotionally months ago, maybe even years ago in a long-term relationship, didn't tell the guy, and worked up the courage to finally do what she wanted to do. Nine times out of ten, she's on Snapchat somewhere, secretly, anonymously messaging some dude, trying to keep some guy as a life plan B kind of option, right? She has that back option. She always has that exit strategy. And meanwhile, the guy gets called a narcissist because... He gets tired of her being avoidant, pulling away, severing the attachment to them, being unavailable emotionally, constantly. And so he gets angry, upset, depressed, hurt. Then she doesn't care about any of his feelings because she's checked out already. She doesn't care. Something that he deeply disputes as he continues to fight the idea that he could be a potential narcissist. The truth is, again, you start talking to single women and they start putting those little demons in your head telling you the grass is greener on the other side. Oh, he'll love you better. Oh, he won't do that. Oh, that man's abusive. Oh, that's toxic. Oh, he needs to change. Oh, he doesn't take accountability. And then enter 2023, everyone's favorite word. Oh, he's narcissistic. Oh, you need to get away from him. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not healthy. Meanwhile, they never tell you what they do 
to elicit the reactions from the men that they get. Likely in defense, he, slowly through his uploads, flipped the accusation. Now Quantum was calling his ex-wife narcissist, and in one TikTok he both explains the danger of them and their tactics of flipping the accusation. The more I look into this, the more I realize, like, narcissistic people are legitimately dangerous. Like, why are we not rounding them all up and forcing them to get treatment and care to resolve their mental traumas that destroy others? She took everything I owned and has refused to give it back, calling it marital property. Now, if somebody is being abused, because, you know, narcissists always love to flip it on you and say, like, oh, you've abused me. If you're really being abused... Why would you do that to somebody else? Why would you take everything they own? Wouldn't you just get your shit, get yourself, and leave? Besides other TikToks disparaging women and falling back and arguing with strangers as he was doing on Quantum TV... I'm almost embarrassed making a response to you. Like, that's how, like, far above you I am as far as, like, intellectually... Referencing the comments, he was developing a small community of like-minded people that appreciated his opinions. He claimed he was going to therapy and revealed how he deals with it all. Hopefully this helps some of you guys that are like, shit, it's late, I don't know what to do, I love this person, I can't stop thinking about them, everyone, and I mean, fucking everyone will tell you to move on. That shit doesn't work, bro. I find my peace at the bottom of a bottle, that's, that's where peace happens. The faster you drink, the better you'll feel, do it on an empty stomach, and it works even better. His last TikTok was uploaded July 1st in where he says goodbye to his followers, and that he was going to continue to upload on Quantum TV. This wasn't going to be another one-sided fight. The source is somewhat unreliable because it is all secondhand from Quantum's previous ex-admin that goes mainly by Anonymous. Anonymous's source is Quantum's ex-wife. Someone that Anonymous, another creator, and Review Tech USA all claim they have spoken to. But first, why would Anonymous turn against Quantum? This actually started in around October of 2022, when giving technical advice, as Anonymous was also in a similar field as Quantum, Anonymous made the mistake of using footage from Elden Ring as reference material. Quantum finding out about this demoted Anonymous from admin to moderator, but a few hours later apologized and restored his position. The lashing out made Anonymous feel uncertain. What was the nail in the coffin was a deleted video that contents cannot be confirmed, where Quantum allegedly attacks some aspect of the military. Anonymous claiming to be a veteran was insulted and left, and became what is in essence Quantum's largest detractor, and launched a channel that gives technical advice and mostly targets Quantum. On Anonymous's channel, he tells stories. Like when Quantum, in frustration of a rat, screenshotting and leaking messages from his Discord banned 97% or so of the users. But it was pointless because it turned out to be a mod that was leaking the information. There are more stories that highlight Quantum's general incompetence. The real meat, in terms of claims, is found in his channel's community tab. This is where he posts revelations of previous events that had no conclusion. Source from Quantum's ex-wife, that in itself has little legitimacy. What does give it legitimacy is that Quantum, in an attempt to discredit his wife by saying in his own community post, quote, So as she runs to YouTubers giving half-truths and total lies to smear my reputation, remember that there are two sides to every story, unquote. And, quote, She wants to keep making our divorce a public spectacle, unquote. He is verifying that Anonymous' source is legitimate, and is in fact his ex-wife. She was the one that exposed his Total Tech membership and how he was able to get his hands on so many televisions, and how he got access to the Ackman's mother's information, being a service that he has a monthly subscription to. This also explains the spam calls made towards Ninjitian and his girlfriend several years back. Quote, yes, and he even did it to himself and recorded it to confuse Ninjitian and make him think it was a random troll. He even called his girlfriend using her father's phone number, so to her it looked like her dad's phone was hacked. That's why she was scared. She confirmed that Quantum is the obsessive person most perceived him to be, especially with moderating comments. Quote, Yes, even when we were out at dinner or sitting in the car or anything, if he has free time, he was approving comments. He would lie and say it's because people kept commenting personal info, but all the comments he deleted were just negative comments about him or a video. Unquote. For underperforming videos, she alleges, quote, There are a few videos he felt should have done better, so he bought the views. Unquote. She also verifies those quote-unquote hacked tweets were from him. And there are two more bombshells. Well, rather one, because the first was assumed. 
in that he never played Elden Ring and just watched videos to form a review. A game that he sources to all his problems. Something that he was even frustrated at when it won Game of the Year and still continues referencing it in other media like his review of Hogwarts. It's not on what Elden Ring is on where it's like clunky and low frame rates, no no. It has high frame rates, beautiful fidelity, and an easy mode. Lastly was Quantum Apotheosis that was rebranded as Next Gen Gamers. It was the strongest possibility to get him banned when he was at the center of his own controversy. Yet mysteriously in the same period it was unbanned. The explanation given by Quantum's ex-wife only brings more confusion, because she does verify that as the Ackman suspected, Quantum Apotheosis was banned and was using Quantum TV to ban Evade. But when Ackman reported what should have gotten Quantum TV and the rest of his channels banned, instead, YouTube reinstated Quantum Apotheosis. Quantum's ex-wife through Anonymous clarifying that Quantum does not have any close ties with YouTube, and the reinstating of his channel was pure coincidence and luck. Another possibility is that Quantum, after all this time, with his banned channel being brought to light, appealed the ban. An option available to him all this time, and an employee accepted the appeal, leaving other YouTube employees enabled to act on the ban evasion. And so, for now, this story comes to a close. An unsatisfactory ending for all involved. The creators from Quantum to Actman all had something taken from them over the drama. Shared with Actman and the general YouTube sphere of other creators and their audiences was an unfortunate reimagining of what YouTube is. This is an exposure in how flawed and ineffective YouTube is all the way from the bottom in those that review videos to the top that remove videos and partnerships at will with little explanation. Perhaps it is a good thing that no movement can influence YouTube's decision in protecting potentially innocent creators, but that gives the company too much credibility and quantum too much leniency. The unsatisfactory end for him was not any revelation, as that would have been an improvement to his character. Instead, he has shown himself to be the same person. His actions could be spurred by a mental illness or something similar, and that is already far worse than anyone deserves. I have been and will continue to be June the King. Thank you for watching.